this lecture, uh, I'd like to talk about the feeling or emotions of God. The world's most horrible, most tragic disaster on the world history is the Noah's flood. And so many people died. Entire people died except Noah's family. Why? We kind of suppose that God was very angry. God was so angry. Why? At that time, the people were so bad. That's why he decided what to kill them all. So this story of of the flood is really making people mis misunderstand the God's love. Well, everybody says God is love, but whenever the moment you think about this flood, Noah's flood, then wow. I'm scared. God is so angry. Then he kills. Is that the truth, really? Not the Christians think that way. And let's go back to the Genesis chapter 6, uh, verse 5 here. The Lord saw that the wickedness of humankind was so great in the earth, and that every inclination of the thoughts of their heart was only evil continually. <laughs> all human beings at that time, they all of them thinking what? Evil. Wicked, continually. Mm. Okay. Uh, let me ask you this question: What is the reason for this? Why the people, other than the Noah's family, can only think the evil, nothing good? That means what? They left God completely. Or God left them completely. Them and the God was completely what? Separate. What happens if you are being separated from God completely? Then, as a re result for that, we human being dies. Why? Because God is the life giver. So we separate ourselves from the self giver. Then that means death. Right? God does not have to kill them. Hmm. As long as you are what? You're away from God, completely separated. That means you're refusing to receive the life from God. Then that means what? Death. Hmm. <clears throat> Then look at the verse 6 here. So they, the people left God. They don't listen to God's voice at all. That's why they continually thinking evil. Which what evil spirits are putting into their mind what to think. Such a continuous 
and there's no voice of Holy Spirit anymore. Hmm. So God faced the situation, terrible situation. So God was so angry. Hmm? God is love. God is still what? Loving them. God's love did not change because they were that way. They refused to listen to voice of God. If you love your child so much, but they don't listen to you and they want to leave from you, they want to go away from you. What would be your feeling? Anger? So, now we can find how the God felt that, uh, how, what was the God's feeling at that point of time here. And the Lord was what? Sorry. God was so sorry. Sorry means what? Sorry is not uh, uh, um, not really attacking or anger. Sorry is what? Ah, it's my fault. I'm so sorry. Forgive me. You know. So, in other uh, Bible. Uh, it says uh, in, at the King James, it says, and it repented God. Ah, oh, 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 oh. it's my fault. God, uh, it repented, Lord, that He had made man on the earth. <sighs> It was my fault to create man on the earth. There was no anger toward them. And God what? God is so sorry and he said what? It grieved him at his heart. Grieve. God feels sorry and what? Grief. The grief. In Korean language, uh, there's no uh, no uh, word to really represent grief. Mm. Grief is a sadness and uh, longing for missing, like a, a heart, my uh, some woman's husband died. And this woman grieves for her husband. Then I, I miss him so much. It is so painful. That's how God felt when all human beings on earth become so evil, completely went away from God. And God was left alone. And he was so sad, he was even what? Repenting. He feels so sorry. I wish I didn't create them on earth. When as a, as a parent, as a mother or father, when you have that kind of child, you know, really, I don't care. You know, I'm going to leave you. you know, I have nothing to do with you. Anymore, you are not my mom. Then the mom gets angry when he, she still love him. No, she become what? So sorry, <sighs> so painful. So she, she feels that. <sighs> I wish I didn't <laughs> give him a birth. Is it's, it's, it describes 
the, the worst kind of pain of the heart the human being can get. And grieved him. Grieved him means what? Uh, longing for him to come back. Yeah. My husband died. Oh, I wish my husband come back, come back alive. You know. So that kind of healing. So God felt that way at that time, time of the flood. See. And they were so bad, and God was so angry, okay, I'm gonna kill them all. Uh-uh. God felt this kind of pain, and grief, and he, and he was, he was missing them. God cannot be with them anymore. God had to leave them. Why? Because they have, they what? They all refused him to have a, a, a voice of God in their heart. God feel like a crying. Hmm. So, so it is time uh, for us to uh, look at uh, what is the grief means uh, in detail. More detail. Okay. And the Lord was so sorry, and it grieved him to his heart. So grieving, there's another meaning of the grief. Grieving is, in English, it's wailing or a mourning. Somebody I love died. I mourn him. That's what the grief means, actually. <clears throat> so, grieve, the verb, uh, means grieved, grieving, uh, to feel grief or great sorrow. Uh, uh, as an example, she has grieved over her husband's death for nearly three years. Three years. So it grieved me to see you so unhappy. Well, next. Synonym for, uh, for grieve. Grieve is synonym is a mourning. Imply showing suffering caused by sorrow. Uh, grieve is the stronger word implying deep mental suffering often endured alone in silence. Wow, the worst kind of a, a, a pain. To grieve over the loss of or death of a friend. So, uh, the Bible used this word, grieve, uh, in Hebrew, uh, this word is called yachab. Yachab. Yachab is grieving. Mm. Uh, <clears throat> there is a other example in the Bible, in the, uh, particularly in Old Testament, about uh, grieving. Um, David had a son. The son David loved most. And, but the, that son uh, killed other brother and other sons of the David. And then he had to run away because, uh, you know, since uh, that, uh, the son, uh, son David loved most was, uh, uh, the, his name was uh, Absalom. And he loved Absalom, but that Absalom killed another brother. Uh, David, David, just other sons, and he had to what? Escape. And uh, finally, uh, so after a long time of uh, of uh, you know time passed, and then 
Finally, David had him come back. And so when, when Absalom came back, he had his plan. His plan was, I want to be the king. Wow. Then, <clears throat> I want to be the king. Then he gathered his people, and then he launched a war against the father. Bad, bad son, right? And then David, the King David, was almost, you know, almost defeated by his son, Absalom. And then, eventually, uh, the David win, have a victory over his son. And the, for, during that war, Absalom was killed. And guess what happened? So, all the people were so cheerful and so happy that we won the war. You know, they're celebrating, happy. But uh, guess what's happening to David? David's mourning. The king is weeping and the mourning. Mourning. King is grieving. And he says, King is grieving. King is grieving for his son. Second Samuel 19, verse 2. So everybody else is so happy and celebrating, and then suddenly there is a, a word saying, But King is grieving. King is crying. Yeah. The king is grieving for his son. The king covered his face. David, the king David covered his face and the king grieved with a loud voice saying, Oh, my son Absalom. Oh, Absalom, my son, my son. <laughs> the, the soldiers, they they had a victory in the war, and and they are not happy. What king is crying, grieving for his son Absalom, our enemy? Here's the word grief. It's yachap, same word in Hebrew in uh, uh, Genesis chapter six, or of the. Uh, uh, Noah's flood, the emotion, the feeling of the David, the feeling of the God at that time was the same feeling. And that's what Bible proves. Now, there's another story to describe the Yachav, the grieving. Before David became a king of Israel, uh, the, the first king of Israel was Saul. Saul. And Saul has a son, uh, uh, hmm? Jonathan. Jonathan. Saul has son. What was the name of son? Hmm? Jonathan. And the David and the Jonathan were so close. There's, they have such a deep, deep uh, uh, friendship. Okay. And, uh, but the Jonathan's father, King Saul, hate David. Because people like David more than <laughs> King Saul. And uh, the King Saul was burning up with what? Jealousy. And he is planning to kill uh, David. And Jonathan found out his father, King Saul, was definitely trying to kill his dear friends, David. 
And the David has to, what? Run away. Yeah. So we can see here, Jonathan, Jonathan's father, King Saul, was determined to put David to death. So David has to what? Run away. And Jonathan and David has to be what? Separated. Now, Jonathan, he was grieved over David. In Korean language, grief can be expressed as 그리워하다. 너무너무 그리워하다. 그리워하다. Grieve, something similar, right? <laughs> so, now you learned enough what, what the grief means. So, God, that was God's feeling in Noah's time, when all the people except Noah's family is sort of completely separated from him. It was not the anger. Uh, it was not the what uh, vengeance or revenge. Oh, okay, I'm gonna kill you guys. You know. So now go back to the Bible. Uh, okay, uh, Genesis chapter six, uh, verse six. Uh, Lord uh, God was grieved. Uh, <clears throat> And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created. Oh. Destroy man whom I, I, I have created from the face of earth, both man and the beast, and the creeping thing, and the folds of the air, <clears throat> for it, it repents me, I'm so feeling sorry that Repents me that I have made them. It sounds like what? God is so mad, right? And I'm going to wipe them out. I'm going to kill them all. But uh, if you look at the Bible carefully, uh -uh, God was not angry. He was feeling sorry. He is grieved. So, and God says, I will destroy men. Just because the people are so bad now, so evil, and God was angry, okay, I'm going to kill them all. That's not the way it is. Now, you have to be very careful. Uh, because the Bible says this way, I will destroy man. I will destroy man. Now, you have to be very careful. Uh, you know, you have to remember that by leaving, by being separated away from God, that means what? You chose. You chose death. God does not even have to kill them. If God says, okay, I cannot give them life, so I'm going to stop giving life. To the people, then what happened? People dies. Why? People don't want to receive the life from God. Yeah, that's what it is. So you have to look at you know Bible very carefully. Um, let's look at this way. Uh, I will destroy the man whom I have created from the face of earth. So, it, it, if you read the sentences, you know, we can guess that God is very angry, but, but then, no. Let me show you. I am sorry that I have made them. Uh, it was all what? Oh, I repent. It repented God. Over the what? Why I shouldn't have really created man on the earth? That's what it means. And we can see the other, you know, uh, place uh, is really God 
really meant to destroy them, the all the people. So we can see that's not the way it is in the other places. Okay, First Chronicle, chapter ten, verse four. Then it was King Saul who does not really. <laughs> he always want to show up. I am better than David, you know. Uh, so that kind of person King Saul is, and uh, and God did not want him to have a war against the Palestine at that time. But God, uh, I mean, uh, the uh, Saul uh, went away, you know, went ahead and uh, made a war with Palestine, and. He was being defeated. Now he was being uh, uh, being chased by Palestinian you know, soldier, and he realized it is the end of his uh, his time. And uh, you know what? So Saul took his own sword and fell on it. Saul commit what? Suicide. Saul killed himself. That's what the Bible describes. It doesn't say God killed Saul. Okay, now, uh, now it it uh, uh, the first Chronicle chapter ten verse four. Right now, at the same chapter ten, it says uh, verse thirteen. So Saul died. Of for his unfaithfulness, and he was unfaithful to the Lord, in that he did not keep the command of the Lord. Moreover, he had he had consulted the medium seeking guidance, and it did not, he did not seek guidance from the God Lord. Therefore, God put him to death. And turned the kingdom over to the David. Did God kill the soul? No. But Bible describes this way, just like in the Noah's flood, people went away from God. They refused to receive life from the God anymore. They said, "God is not the life giver for us. We live ourselves, our own life here." So Bible is in in this way, you know. It's a funny, you know, expression. Uh, God did not actually kill the soul, but the Bible says God killed the soul. Okay, yeah. but God actually did not destroy the people. Why? Why there was a flood? Because God. Did what? When God created the uh, uh, earth, God separated water, uh, the upper water and what? Lower water. Then there was a space. So it was God separated water. The God of Bible, God of Israel, uh, does separate water like uh, He separated the Red Sea, right? And the uh, uh, river Jordan and separated. That means God is what? God has uh, that kind of spiritual power, energy to overrun what? The gravity. So, uh, so God was holding the water not to fall down, right? They was God, but when they refuse God, what can happen? God has removed the kind of you know work He is doing. Why? Because God was refused. Oh. So that's why flood happened. It was not the God's plan. Okay, these guys become so evil, and I'm going to kill them all by having the what? Water come down. That was 
worst kind of misunderstanding. Then another one is here, the book of Exodus, chapter 7, uh, God is sending uh, Aaron and the Moses to uh, King Pharaoh of Egypt to ask them what? To send Israelites uh, go home. And uh, then God says, what? But I will harden Pharaoh's heart. I will harden. Okay, uh, Moses, Aaron, go ask him, ask Pharaoh uh, to send your people away, uh, go away to the uh, Canaan. Then God says, oh, wait a second, but you know what? I harden Pharaoh's heart, so that's why he's not going to send you away. That's a strange thing, right? It doesn't make any sense. It's self-contradictory. Then when Pharaoh does not listen to you, I will lay my hand upon Egypt and uh, uh, so I will <laughs> lay my hand upon the, uh, upon the Egypt and I will send the plague to Egyptians. Yes, it doesn't make sense at all. God says, "I will make, uh, I will make Pharaoh's heart uh, hardened, and therefore that he's not gonna listen to you. He's not gonna send you uh, Israelites uh, away. Uh, then I will what? Punish him. Why punish? It's it's God uh, made uh, Pharaoh's does not listen to God, to Moses." See now, so I was for sure that, that you know there is another contradictory expression here. It was not God hardened Pharaoh's heart. So I searched all everywhere in the um, book of Exodus. Then I found here Exodus chapter eight thirty two, but Pharaoh hardens his heart. It was not God hardened Pharaoh's heart. Who hardens Pharaoh's heart? Pharaoh himself. Is that interesting? Uh, Pharaoh, uh, and now Pharaoh hardened his heart. At this time also, it means what? Every time. Pharaoh hardened his heart, so he did not. He refused to send the uh, people of God go back home. So Pharaoh hardened his own heart, and this time also, every time Pharaoh hardened his own heart. And refused God's request every time. It was not God hardened Pharaoh's heart. So why God said this kind of thing? It actually it was Pharaoh hardened his own heart, uh, and the King Saul killed himself. Uh, and then uh, the people at the Noah's time they refused God. And refused to receive a life from God, and they chose what death. Then God says, "What I am going to destroy them. I'm going to kill them." And uh, uh, also, the uh, uh, God killed the king Saul, right? And then what? Uh, God made Pharaoh's heart. Hardened, so that's why Pharaoh's heart. It's opposite way of expression. Why? Why God's Bible describes things this way, but Bible always shows it is contradictory, and the Bible give us what little hint, saying you think, think about it. It's because. God still loved the Pharaoh too. 
And uh, uh, if you look at uh, uh, Exodus chapter 9.16, says, God loved Pharaoh and God want to uh, save him also. Yeah, so if God save him, uh, the Pharaoh, then my, the name of God can be spread all over the world. God wanted to use Pharaoh. However, Pharaoh refused God. That's how he dies. Yeah. So Pharaoh went to Red Sea, and uh, uh, God was God was separating the water, and the Pharaoh walk in to kill the Israelites, and God decided, okay, I'm gonna kill him now. Why? Pharaoh got killed in the in the water because Pharaoh also refused to believe God is separating the world and the water. It's not God. It's just what it's some kind of a natural miracle. I don't believe God, God of Israel is the separating world. So God was again refused. God could not what open up the water for Pharaoh anymore. He was refused because of God, who is what, who is unconditional love, loving God, really respect our what the freedom of choice. So, it, since God allowed. Uh, the Pharaoh's choice. Yeah. God, once Pharaoh refused God, then God has to what? Back away. And then Pharaoh dies. And then people dies at the time of Noah. How God is feeling? That's, that's, it's so painful. Hmm. Uh, then I want to. I want you to see this. Then, so people, uh, God decided, uh, you know, to allow people uh, their choice of death. And the, and God was so sad, so painful, and the Noah, Noah, look at the face of God. You know, so look at this. But Noah found, Noah는 발견했다. Noah discovered, he discovered what? Grace, the love. Where did he discover God's love, grace? In the eyes of the Lord. When Noah looked at eyes of the God, Noah found love toward everyone who even refused him. Despite of that kind of refusal, God's love did not change. But Noah found grace in the Eyes of the law are Lord. Ah. This means what? Noah found the tears falling down from his eyes. God was not angry in the hatred. God was so painful and missing them. So this kind of love of God, we have to see in the every story of the Bible. Unfortunately, so many people, absolute majority of the people are finding what? Anger and revenge and that kind of thing they, they get from the Noah's flood. No, we all have to be like Noah. Right? When we read this kind of 
very painful story, we also have to be like Noah, to be able to see the love of God in the eyes of the God. Right? So, uh, I want everybody else still see the grace in the eyes of the Lord, the tears falling down from the eyes of the God, as Noah did. So, the difference between the Noah and all other people got killed is what? The God was love. The, what kind of love? Unconditional love. No matter what, God loves His children. So let us remember that uh, God is that kind of God. Whenever we talk about Noah's flood story, then oh, it's a scary God. <laughs> Please don't do that. And uh, so that's that's the only way we can trust God. If God punished the people like this, can you really believe God? Can you really trust God? No. God will love me only when we behave good. No, not that kind of God. Unconditional love. So God bless you uh, with Holy Spirit. Uh, whenever you see the Bible, you, you'll find as what Noah's found at that time in the eyes of the Lord. Amen. Amen.